All right, guys, here we go. Similar triangles, day two. All right, um, let's move this out of the way. Okay, quick review. Given that the following triangles are similar, use um, proportions to solve for the unknown segment. So if these two triangles are congruent to each other, then what is the length of NM? Remember, anytime you see um, two letters together and they're telling you to find it, they want to know the length of it. So this is our X right here. So I know that 4 is going to pair with the X. So I'm going to go 4 over X. And I know that the 6 is going to pair with the 15. So equals 6 over 15. And remember, if you use from this triangle first, you have to use from this triangle first. So cross multiply 4 times 15 and 6 times X. So I've got 6X equals 4 times 15 is 60. So X is 10. So this length is 10. Okay, and then over here, um, RQP, so that would be 1, 2, 3, and ONM, so 1, 2, 3. Remember, you have to pair corresponding sides together. So if I'm looking for Y, then I have to pair it with 15 because those are my two 15, my two 1, 3 sides. So I've got 15 over Y equals... So um, this is my 2, 3 side, and this is my 2, 3 side. So I'm going to pair it with 10 and 30. Since I used 15 first, I need to use 10 first. So I've got 10y equals um, 15 times 30 is 450. Divide both sides by 10, and I get 45. So y is 45. All right, and I apologize for this thing being a little sketchy, but I'm having some issues with this at home. All right, so now I have two triangles. And remember, when you have two triangles like this, you may want to redraw them separately so that you have a small triangle because they're just easy to visualize. So this is O, N, E, and this side is 8, and this side is 4. And then you have the bigger triangle where this is H, this is N, and this is Y, and this side is X, the whole side NH from tippy top to corner, corner to corner, so 8 plus 4 is 12. So I'm going to pair the 8 with the 12, so 8 goes with 12, so that means 4 goes with X. So 4 goes with X, so cross multiply 8 times X. And 12 times 4 is 48. Divide both sides by 8. X is 6. So the bottom piece to this triangle is 6. All right. If um, the larger triangle, NGT, is congruent to the smaller triangle, IGH, um, again, what you want to do is draw them separately. So I'm going to redraw the larger triangle. So this side is 24, this side over here, the whole thing is 16 plus X. Now keep in mind, you want the whole side from corner to corner, so you want the whole thing. So that would be 16 plus X. And then you have your smaller triangle, where this side is 12, and this side is X. So if we pair them together, the 24 is going to pair with the 12. So I've got 24 pairing with the 12. So that means the 16 plus X has to pair with the X. So I'm going to cross multiply so I get 24X equals, and then I have to go this way. So that would be 12 times 16 plus X. All right, so we've got 24X equals um, 12 times 16. I didn't bring my calculator, so I'm going to do that real quick. 12 times 16, so that would be 12, 72, 2, 1, so 192. So 12 times 16 would be 192, and 12 times x would be 12x. So if I subtract the 12x from both sides, 24 minus 12 is 12. 
that's a 2. Um, since 12 times 16 gave me 192, then if I divide by 12, I'm going to get 16. And I told you this thing was acting crazy. So x is 16. So then I go up here and I say, well, x is 16. So this piece is also 16, so that would make the whole thing 32. All right. So if ABC, ABC is a right triangle, is congruent to CED, which is another right triangle, find x and y. Well, I'm going to redraw these because if you'll notice, they drew this kind of weird. So you have two right triangles, but they're flipped. So I'm going to draw the larger one. So this would be A, A, D, where your right angle is here. This piece is 5. And this whole piece from B to D is X plus 7. And then I'm going to redraw this right triangle here. And I'm going to draw it facing the same way. So my right angle is at E. So that makes the other side C. And this is my D. Um, ED, which would be this side here, is 6. So notice I flipped it around so they look alike. And CE is still 2. Now it's a little easier to tell which two sides pair together. The 5 pairs with the 2. So the 5 pairs with the 2 equal to the x plus 7 pairs with the 6. So we cross multiply. So I've got 2 times x plus 7 equal to 5 times 6 is 30. So I've got 2x plus 14 equals 30. So if I subtract the 14, I get 2x is equal to 16. Divide both sides by 2. x is 8. So x is 8. So that made that one easy. Now y is this side over here. So um, let's see. Um, this would be y plus 6. And this side is 7. So BD is x plus 7, AD is y plus 6. So now I'm going to pair this with the 7. So the 5 and the 2 I'm still going to keep. So the 5 goes with the 2, but this time y plus 6 goes with 7. So see how it was a little easier if you flipped it around? So now we're going to cross multiply this way. 2 times y plus 6 equals 35, because 5 times 7 is 35. 2y plus 12 equals 35. Boy, this thing is really weird. It's really right, making me write like a kindergartner. So subtract 12, so I get 2y equals 23. Divide both sides by 2. So y equals 11.5. So remember, decimals are numbers too. All right. This one doesn't give us a picture, so that means we're probably going to have to draw one. So, um, Jesse, James and Jesse are standing next to each other. Okay, so I'm going to draw... Um, James cast a 12-foot shadow, so I'm going to say this is James, and his shadow is 12. Remember, shadows are always on the ground. You never see them floating around. So, um, and then here's Jesse. So if his shadow is shorter, he's probably shorter. So this is James, and this is Jesse. Oh, maybe. All right, uh, Jesse is five feet tall. So if he's five feet tall, how tall is James? Well, if you kind of think about it, you kind of have little right triangles here. So I know James's height is going to pair with Jesse's height. So James's shadow is going to pair with Jesse's shadow. So cross multiply, 9x equals 5 times 12 is 60, and divide both sides by 9. So uh, let's see, 60 divided by 9, uh, let's go over here because I don't have my calculator, so I need to do it by hand. Um, I know if I do 7, it's 63, so it's got to be 6, so that's 54 with six left over, so that would be six and two-thirds, so that would be about 6.7. So he is six and two-thirds feet tall, so I'm going to go six and two-thirds feet. 
All right. Almost done, guys. All right. Felix the cat drank a potion so he could grow in size. However, the potion turned his 18-inch wide by 50-inch tall body into a cat that was 63 inches wide and 175 inches tall. So he had 18 inches wide divided by 50 inches tall and he became 63 inches wide oh my goodness I am sorry guys this is terrible divided by 175 inches tall so what did I have to multiply x by x times what equals 63 50 times what gives me 175 so basically what is 175 divided by 50 so 50 is going to go in one two three and a half times so that means my scale factor is 3.5 all right, oops, back up. All right, Jim has a scale model of a sailboat. So here's the big boat, here's the little boat. The figure shows drawings of the original sailboat and the model, find X. So I'm going to pair the 203 with the 10.15. I think I'm gonna have to get the calculator out on my cell phone. And the tallness pairs with the tallness. So we're going to cross multiply, so I get 10.15x equals, and let me see, calculator, all right, so 203 times 8, 203 times 8, so 1624. And then divide both sides by 10.15. So X is 160. So the height of this boat is 160 inches. All right. Last one. A person six feet tall. So here's a person. And they're six feet tall. They cast a one and a half foot shadow. So it's not very tall. So the sun is really shiny. At the same time, a flagpole casts a seven foot shadow. How tall is the flagpole? So the height of the guy, the height of the flagpole, the shadow with the shadow. So 1.5x equals 42. So divide both sides by 42. I'm sorry, divide both sides by, divide 42 by 1.5. And we get that x is 28. So the flagpole is 28 feet all right have a great day guys and i will see you next time